Hi everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is my October reading wrap up. The first book I'll talk about is the one that I can't show you and that is Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Ha Lee. I read this mostly as an audiobook from Scribd and also partially as an ebook. I inhaled this one in about two days. It's a pretty complex story. The bones of it is there's this artist called Jebby and they're kind of like selected to do a job for the government which is a colonial government and they're oppressing um, Jebby's people and so Jebby takes a job with them as an artist first of all creating the pigment that they use and then second of all uh, researching this one particular automaton that they have which is in the shape of a dragon and Jebby's sister is really mad at them for taking a job with the government because they are a colonial government and their people have been oppressed and there's there's more to that feeling than that but that's spoiler territory. Jebby starts having feelings for one of their sort of like co-workers who has another tie to their family past. They start finding out more about the world that they live in because they've been kind of sheltered, they're a little bit naive, they don't really know all the intricacies of what's going on, like they just basically do their art and make their money and that's it. So it is a little bit of a learning curve for them to find out exactly what kind of world they live in and also decide their place in it and what they want to do and how they want to live their life. It was absolutely phenomenal. It, there was just so much happening and it was also incredible and I feel like if I told any more about it I would spoil the whole book. And like several books that I read in September I feel like to really grasp the whole scope of this story I would have to read it again which I really hope to do because I just absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars inhaled it in the shortest amount of time I've read a book that wasn't a novella in quite a few months now. The next book that I finished was Tales from a Tall Forest by Sean McAuliffe. This is three stories in the one book and they're sort of fairy tale retellings but in the same kind of vein as Into the Woods in that all of the fairy tale characters are in all of the stories and they all kind of intersect with each other. It was really clever and really funny. I only gave it four out of five stars even though I mostly thoroughly enjoyed it because some of the names that Sean McAuliffe chose were unfortunate and somewhat ill-advised. Like it was just a case of like there was one specific name that was given to a character who was either like mad or not very bright and it was obviously a non-English name and all of the other characters had like regular English names and I don't think that Sean McAuliffe is racist or that it was intended to be racist but it did come off that way so just be aware of that going in other than that it was really good the second one's just come out I'm probably going to pick that up too because this was just a really fun time and a really fun thing to read for October and also the production quality of this book is phenomenal it's got a lot of foil on it and underneath the dust jacket it looks like this so yeah just a few awkward name choices other than that great really fun the next book that I finished was The Sidekicks by Will Kostakis. This was a reread for me. This is a gay Australian YA. So there are these three boys, Miles, Harley and Ryan, and they were all friends with this boy called Isaac and Isaac dies and it kind of leaves them all adrift because while technically they were one big friend group, Isaac was the one that kind of tied them all together and without him they don't really know where they stand with each other because they were all friends with Isaac but they weren't really friends with each other as well. So now with Isaac gone they have to decide whether they want to band together and become friends in their own right or if they want to just let things lie and um, call it the end of an era and with Isaac gone let their friendship go as well. I mean, the sidekicks come from the fact that uh, Isaac was like the main character and then they were all his sidekicks. Ryan is a swimmer, he's also gay, most of his storyline in this book is not coming to terms with that but deciding whether or not he wants to come out and coming out and dealing with the repercussions of that but not in a way that would make this a coming out narrative but like coming of age if you understand the distinction. Harley is like the the school rebel, um, he 
goes out drinking even though he's underage, he doesn't wear his uniform properly, he wags school a lot, he's a little bit from the wrong side of the tracks. And then Miles is the nerd. He's um, the second smartest person in their year. He's also a budding filmmaker and he's made a student film which is a big part of this novel as well. Similarly with Phoenix Extravagant there is so much going on in this book that I can't really go into a lot of detail about it without spoiling it. I did also read this for a secret TBR though and I did talk about it in more detail in that video. But there's just so much happening, really great character work. All of the three boys have really great character growth and the way they interact with the people around them who are also affected by Isaac's death like the other boys in their year and Isaac's family. It was all just really nice and I I was kind of worried that this wouldn't hold up on a reread but it absolutely did and I love it just as much as I did the first time. It's absolutely phenomenal. Please pick it up. And the next book that I finished is The Island of Excess Love by Francesca Leah Block. This is the sequel to Love in the Time of Global Warming. Also read this for a secret TBR video. This book is garbage. I gave it one star. It's transphobic as hell. I don't see the point of this book existing at all. The entire narrative happened without the consent of the characters, by which I mean there was a ship and they didn't want to go on it. They went on there and made the conscious choice to go off it again and to not go back. And then they were essentially forced back onto the ship, forced onto this island. They were then fed enchanted food and they didn't get a lot of say in what they did. Without this one, the first one would have been great. This one just ruins everything. Also talk about it in the other video. And just, ugh. Gross. The next book that I read after that one was A Concise Chinese English Dictionary for Lovers by Sha Lu Go, which I have been reading on and off all year because each section of the book, like each chapter, corresponds with a month. But I only had like 50 pages left to go and the last section is like February. I didn't really want to be reading it until February next year, so I decided to just finish it. I don't exactly know how I feel about this book. I gave it four stars. I think that her love interest, like before he got with her, was gay, like only ever slept with men and then ended up with this main character. It's about this character called, she calls herself Zed, but her name is Zhuang Xiao Chao and she goes to England from China to learn English. Um, her parents own a shoe factory in China and they send her there because learning English will further her career prospects, I think was the thing. And so while she's there, she hooks up with this English guy, goes to live with him in his flat, learns more about the language and about the culture. But their relationship is kind of very fraught. They don't communicate very well. Like I thought that overall the book was really good and there's something about it that makes me think that if I read it when I'm older, I will get more out of it. And I'm definitely interested in reading more of Shalugo's other work. There is a book that's come out this year called A Lover's Discourse, which is the same sort of basic concept. A Chinese woman moves to London and experiences this different culture. I'm hoping to pick that one up fairly soon because I think it would be really interesting to read that while this one is still fresh in my mind and to see if they complement each other. This book is written the way that Zed speaks. So in the beginning the English is a little bit unpolished, the sentence structure is quite the way a native English speaker would say it, but um, as the book goes along it improves and it's um, a representation of her skills in speaking the language and writing the language also improving. So it's not difficult to read, but it's just, just know that it's not in like quote unquote proper English. Even, yeah, four out of five stars, not quite sure how I felt about it, but I enjoyed the experience of reading it. So, mostly positive, I think. And then, the last book that I read in October is uh, iconic The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle, which remains a phenomenal masterpiece, and I gave it five stars. It's essentially a book to teach children about numbers and about counting and it's this story about this caterpillar who just eats everything that he finds and then there's a surprise at the end. It's just great and I loved it and um, I don't know if you guys have noticed behind my head here I've got the caterpillar here and uh, he's uh, eyeing off this peach right here because I thought that that would be clever and also funny but I stand in front of it so people can't really see but I want you to know 
that's what that is. But yeah, that's all I have for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have read any of these books and you would like to let me know what you thought of them, feel free to do that. As always, if you just want to let me know that you are here, also feel free to leave an emoji in the comments. Otherwise, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.